Look at me. I am floating in midair. I can project a shadow of my being into nothingness. I am about three feet above the ground, and I am the most powerful of all the Japanese deities. And for some reason, Amaterasu has been given a piccolo voice in this instance. Which, technically, she could be a guy, but we're not going to talk about that because people would get arguing in the comments. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Okami. That voice actually takes a lot out of my throat. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Last episode, we entered Pongton after running a marathon through Yoshpet, going past annoying trees that won't bloom and throw 100 mile per hour fastballs at us. And this time, we're going to be exploring Pongton, Isun's hometown. This area is. <laughs> let me let me go ahead and go into first wolf view. Not linear, not linear at all. Um, where there aren't a bunch of alternate paths bringing you to every direction in the world, there are paths of Konohana Blossoms taking you every direction in the world. And that's going to be extremely hard for me to do this in, uh, in organized fashion, but I'm going to give it a shot. And what am I doing? Uh, I'm exploring this place. Going to try to explore every inch of it, starting with this lily pad that's right next to the origin mirror. There's a chest on it that contains the first stray bead. Not even 30 feet from the entrance. Actually, not even one foot from the entrance if you consider how small we are. Oh, that's another thing. Isun is no longer lit with us. He is waiting outside because he doesn't want to come in here for whatever, for, a, bleh, for whatever reason. Apparently, there's some bad blood between him and the the villagers of Pongton. But uh, that's that's why we're here, to forge new bonds without his... Negativity, because he's been negative every time that this place has been mentioned, so we don't want that. So, uh, I don't want to start things off here. I want to start things off from the right and work my way left. I know that's a little bit strange, but you'll understand once I reach this lily pad, which I don't need to use a Konana Blossom to get to. Uh, there are some agate tassels, agate tassels, I have no, no clue. But also, there are more Konana Blossoms, meaning we can bypass, in fact, I think it's possible to entirely bypass, bypass, um, sorry about that, I, I kicked something on the floor. Um, what I was saying is you can actually never have to touch that platform right there. You can just travel using the upper platforms of the canopy and the Konohana Blossoms. So let's go ahead and do that. We will be, we will be going on it at one point. It's not like some self-challenge that I'm trying to, I'm trying to see how, how far I can go without touching the ground, although... If I did that, I would, I would actually be able to make it quite some distance. Um, but w what I am trying to do is just get, cover this the best way I can, and that means I'll be probably using the Conan Blossoms more often than not. So, there are giant clovers, which are a reminder of how small we truly are, and also there's a snail shell. What should we do with the snail shell? Well, usually when I ask you a question like that, it usually means destroy! Destroy the snail shell, pulverize the snail inside, and get paid for it. And then there are these things, which I have no clue what these things are. What even? What even is that? It's not a bug. Is it a? Oh wait, 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 wait! Oh, oh, I know what it is. It's like a, it's a slingshot catapult thing. I think. Like they pulled the nut back on the string and then unleash it. I guess maybe. Like, they're invincible, and I don't... I don't get it. There are, there are a couple more items like that in in Pongton that cannot be interacted with at all. They're just solid objects that are, like, solid steel and can't be, can't be harmed by Power Slash or Cherry Bomb or anything like that. So, in here there's a little girl. Huh? You're a bit small for a wolf, aren't you? And it looks like you're wearing some kind of strange makeup. You're the first visitor in this village who isn't a Ponkle. My name's Mia. Nice to meet you. Punkle girl, Mia. You know, there was a lost child in the forest the other day. She wandered even deeper into the forest and disappeared through the spirit gate, looking almost possessed. The spirit gate is a relic that, that lies deeper inside the forest. It's a strange gate that takes you to another place and another time. But some people say that opening the gate invites misfortune. We Punkles always make sure we still steer well clear of it. But when I saw the girl wandering deeper into the forest, I decided to follow because I was worried about her. I saw the gate open the moment she stood before it. 
and then it was like she had been swallowed up. Do you think I should tell the elder about this, Wolfie? Yeah, that's not something you want to keep under your hat. You should really talk about a, a disappearance, because it could, it could really start a bloodbath, a, a feud between you and whoever the girl belonged to. I'm pretty sure she, she said Oina girl, because I think she would notice if it were a giant girl that had a mask on. Giant for them, because seriously, could you picture, could you picture how big uh, the Oinas would be to Ponkles? I mean, we're about the size of a Ponkle, and I can't really get a close view, but I could probably get one here. No, I can't. Let's see. No, that's... That's not... I can't get close at all. Um, but if you could picture, a Ponkle is about the size of Amaterasu's nose, um, when Amaterasu's full-sized. And if you picture that, how Amaterasu is the size of her own nose right now, and could you picture how big, you know, even the smallest of a human or humanoid being would be? Like, seriously, that's... that's gigantic. Okay, so... We can climb up here. I really like how they integrate... They integrate, like, bugs with this, and, and also some things that belong to humanity. You'll, you'll see what I mean later on, but you can see they use a firefly here for light. They use mushrooms. I It looks like those are light up. Yeah, I would, I would assume those mushrooms are lighting up. It's not that just that they're white. And then they use a, um, a, a caterpillar for a bridge. It's, just, it's very neat how they integrate that in. Hey, that's amazing. A wolf the same size as us. Hmm, it's all a bit suspicious if you ask me. How did you manage to find your way so deep into Yoshpet? Even the, the Oina tribe can't hold out in this forest for long. Any other creatures die out there in an instant. Long ago, there was an Oina girl who got lost out there, though. She was on the brink of death, poor thing. One of our tribe, Isun, found her out there. He helped her find her way back to the edge of the forest. Hmm, it's funny remembering her after all this time. I suppose she must be all grown up now. That, that actually suggests uh, even more so that, you know, the uh, the Ponkles live much longer than we do, because Isun had mentioned something about 200 years being nothing for um, someone like him. So, if you picture that, let's just say 200 years is, I don't know, 5 years. No, let's let's say 10 years uh, in, in a Ponkles' lifetime. That, that means they live for 2,000 years at, around. That's that's insane. So you can you can see how you know these this race um, lives and dies um, in the span of a human age. Okay, so onward. Uh, let's see, where should I go next? Uh, I believe I can go around the back. Oh, there's someone I didn't talk to, so I should I should do that first. I don't think I talked to him. Wow, we don't usually get animals here. The trees in this forest give off strange pollen. Most animals and monsters stay away because they don't like it. We're lucky because it, it's kept our village safe over the years. There have been much more, many more monsters on the prowl lately, though. They're starting to come deeper and deeper into the forest. You're a bit small for a wolf and have some strange markings, but you don't seem to be a bad wolf, which is all that counts. Okay, thank you. You look a lot like you soon. In fact, with your, with your positive attitude, you wanna, you wanna travel with us, huh, buddy? You wanna travel with us? No. You're not interested. You're just, you're just interested in uh, walking in circles. Okay. Are you sure? Because you'd make, you'd make it probably a good companion, not like, Fandle. <laughs> and and a couple of you get that reference. Okay. So where should I go next? I should probably go back up there, probably, maybe. We've gone both levels of this, uh, but I believe there's there's a Conan Blossom available to... Yes, I was right. No, I was not. That's <laughs> that's where we came from. You can see how easy it is to get turned around in this area. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so we can jump over here. I can barely not make it without u having used Conan Blossom. Conan up here. And get this chest. And then we can turn around. And not going on a blow over there because there's a train. Can we make that one? No. We we never really need to worry about running out of ink in, in a Conan train in, anymore because we have you know we have an, an infinity stone, we have max ink, we have golden ink pot, 
I'm never, I really never have to worry about ink again. <laughs> okay, so getting over here, look on the map. We can grab a stray bead. And then move on, because there are, there are more rewards. And vine over there. And that will give us yet another chest that contains... Kutani Pottery! And you know how I had mentioned uh, things that occur uh, that are in human society? Well, you know what I'm standing right on right now? I'm standing on chopsticks, yeah! Like, these are totally chopsticks, do not tell me otherwise. Because I will fight you over it. Online, I will fight you. We'll have like a... Actually, that, that would work. Rock, paper, scissors, I guess? Would that work over the internet? I mean, someone could cheat, maybe. I guess if you did, like, a League of Legends chat, you know, well, I, I say League of Legends, but what I mean is more like instant chat, instant messaging of some sort. Uh, I'm really dead, aren't I? Where is the Conan Blossom? It's right there. Oh, wait, wait, I can salvage this. Yes, yes, yes. Almost fell. I don't really want to know what it's like to fall. I don't really want to, uh, to experience that, that <clears throat> pleasure. It's not something I'm into. Okay, so there's this dude, Kunu. Hey, you're a wolf. How did you manage to get into the village? Hmm, it must be fun playing out about outside. I wish I could, but I have to practice painting the whole time. All of us here are given lessons by the village elder, Ishaku. He can be really strict sometimes. I've got a long way before I can become a gr gr yeah, great artist. If only I could paint like Isun. Then I'd be able to help the gods. You have a very weird walk. Can't can't change the camera, but believe me, he has a very weird walk. A punkle named Isun used to live here, and boy, could he paint. He was the grandson of the village elder, so he had painting lessons every single day, but the villager was too hard on him. He never praised his grandson, no matter how well he painted. One day, Isun decided he'd had enough. He and the elder had a big fight, and he left the village for good. So, there we have it. The story of the feud, or the the blood... What did I say? Blood feud? No, it wasn't a blood feud. The bad blood between um, between Isun and this town. It's not be it's not between Isun and the and the villagers. No, no way. It's between Isun and his grandfather, which is the village elder, Big Whoop. Okay, so here's another example of things you can't interact with. I mean, you can hit, hit them, but they're invincible. You have an eggplant and a cucumber. I don't know why? Are they supposed to look like animals? Did the kids prop them up to look like they had four legs in the animal? I have no idea. But what I do know is it's kind of, kind of comical. Oh, we can, wait, we can stand on this? What? We can? Yeah. Yeah. Mush. Mush. Mush, my slave. Mush. Mush. No. I don't want to wave dash. I want to, I want to, wait, wait. Amaterasu, the slave driver. Swoosh. That was that was a whip. In case you didn't gather that. Okay, let's move onward. We can we can ride around on our on our gourds later. Are those gourds? I don't know. They're something. I don't care to know much more about the science of vegetables. I'm not into that sort of thing. Science of vegetables is a very very technical science. It has a lot of ins and outs that you have to learn. You have to join all the secret clubs. Yeah, there there are secret clubs for vegetables. Um, they're they're called like the the Gourd Association or the no not no they're not called the No Association. Did I fault? No, I didn't. Okay, they're called like the Gourd Association or the the radish chapter. Actually, if there's a radish chapter, I might join because radishes are stinking sweet. Well, they're not, they're spicy, but you get what I mean. They're they're pretty awesome. Radishes are like the best vegetable snack. Okay, let's let's not talk any more about my obsession with radishes because I kind of have one. Let's go. Or jalapenos for that matter. Uh, you have a bug infection, Mr. Mr. TN last airbender dude. <clears throat> oh, this is unusual. We don't often get visitors here. Wow, I've never seen such a small animal in my life. Most animals try to gobble us up or we end up all slobbery. But you're far too small to be able to do that. You've got some cute markings on you, too, though. 
I suppose you're not an ordinary animal. Wait a minute. You're not the god that Ishaku is always talking about, are you? Oh my goodness. So this is what a god looks like. I've never seen one before. We Ponkos are the only ones who can see the gods, you know. Now I know why. Isuns would never be able to see some or Isuns. Humans would never be able to see something so small. Well, what if I told you your your mom is Canadian and your dad works hard for a living and brings home bacon and food? What if I told you that, huh? 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 <laughs> that hurts. Okay, whatever. Let's just. Let's just spite him by helping him, and by helping him, I mean get rid of all of his his pet bugs and also power side his face off, and then arrive. And it, I'm not sure if you caught that, but one bug escaped the, the slaughter. It was right next to the door, hiding, thinking we wouldn't notice it. But in reality, it just had the powers of being invisible whenever the camera's right next to it. Curse you, bug. I will finish you off. I will, I will evolve machine gun arms and destroy you. Nope! Don't fall. These voices are really taking a big strain on my voice. I'm not sure if that's kind of evident through my normal speaking, but it's kind of taking a strain. Oh, oh, we didn't go through the bottom floor. No, we didn't. Let's go now. Ugh. Because that's important. That's actually legit important. We need to go in here. Because this is actually... Well, let me let me have Gango do the, do the talking. What an unusual customer. Say, you're a god, aren't you? We hardly see any here these days. Listen up, good god wolf. I collect things I find in the forest. It's sort of a hobby. Do you want to play shop with me? It's a pretty serious game. Do some shopping? Yes. Let's be serious and sell all our treasures because we have a lot. We're rich. We're magical. We have white porcelain pots, which are worth 15 grand a piece. And we also have et we have three etched glasses. What? Wow. For sixty thousand yen, we're very serious. And we still can't afford the eighth wonder, glaive wielded by eight armed beast god. <laughs> Ink bullets power. <laughs> I, I just need to say that again because it's fun. Glaive wielded by eight armed beast god. That's that's actually kind of fun to say it. In fact, say it right now as I. Do something painful and actually to make money for this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, but, uh, but, uh. Oh, wait. Actually, could I sell off these? I could probably sell off these. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what I was gonna do is sell off all my steel fist sakes because they're worth a thousand a piece, but. Actually, better solution is just to sell all my exorcism slip S's. And then I have, I actually have enough, so that that works. I don't really need exorcism slip S's. They're just kind of a, they're a commodity, not a necessity. So let's go ahead and buy Ape Wonder. And then, do we have enough money to actually buy one of that? Two of that? Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm really stingy about these things, so... Uh, let's see, what could we sell that's... We can sell a Steel Soul Sock, eh? No. No, we'll sell a holy, bo a holy Bone. That works. It's only 250 yen. <laughs> I'm doing that just so I can buy... Oh man, I need more. <laughs> just wait, 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 guys. Don't... Don't leave. <laughs> Don't leave. Um, that works. There. Okay, uh, I'm... I'm a big stickler about this. Buy one. Buy another. And now I have 178 yen left. Big whoop! Thanks, man. You, you're the best. You, you provide me with the stuff. I'll, I'll provide you with some powder donuts soon for my club. Yeah. Quote unquote powder donuts. And you have to have both hands in front of you like the aliens guy. Powdered. Yeah, exactly like that. That's how you say that. Okay, so eighth wonder. We have the first three wonders. The next three wonders, the seventh wonder, and then this is the eighth. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaving out the uh, rosaries because they're not my favorite weapon. I honestly don't like rosaries as much as I do the others. Just personal preference. I just don't like how they lock you in place, and also they're a tad cheap. They're a little bit cheap. Okay, so eighth wonder. I'll be equipping this, and then I'll equip the resurrection beads as my sub, just because it hasn't gotten much screen time, so it will get some here. 
Um, next, uh, da -ba -da -ba. we can power it up, and then I can show it to you. Uh, and then I can tell you my thoughts on it. Ugh. Most people would actually say it's not the coolest looking weapon. And, I don't know. I would have to agree, but to a point. This this weapon does have some things that are really cool from an aesthetic standpoint. For, for example, it actually has a shine, which is pretty nice. I don't think the other weapons have had a shine before. Um, also, it actually... I gave it some thought. And this weapon actually has the... It's the most realistic weapon that Amaterasu has. Other than possibly the, um, the reflectors as a whole. But I think this one's the most realistic. Why? Because this could actually be wielded by Amaterasu. The other weapons, um, they are... They have handles. Which means that they are human weapons. They're not, you know, they're not tailored for a wolf. Now, this weapon, if you consider that that little wheel, what looks like a, like a pirate ship steering wheel, or any ship for that manner, matter, um, if you consider that being attached to Matarasu's back, and being a pivot point, you could actually, I, I could actually see a wolf swinging a blade around, if, it, if that wheel were attached to the back. It could work, especially within the manner that Amaterasu swings it around. She, she, um, she twirls it whenever she swings it. And she doesn't just swing it, stop, and then swing the other direction. She swings, and it it revolves around the handle. And with an actual handle, that doesn't make much sense. But with this, it, it, it could. So I like that. Also, the fact that this blade isn't long as much as it is gigantic and thick. It it looks like something that you'd see from... Let's see, is it Final Fantasy? I think Final Fantasy, that where one of the, one of the characters has a gigantic sword on their back. I could totally see that. So, let's see. Next, we can go here. I... Actually, no. We, I made a mistake. No! I made a bunch of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Also, that's a drum over there. Now that, I, now that I look at it. Or pot, or whatever. But anyway, what I was going to say is... Where is it? It's up here. You want to look up. Where is it? There it is. You want to go over to there, because that's important. Uh, we can use this this vine to get over. Vine, work. Thank you. We can get over there, and it's really. Are you kidding me? Are you are you stinking kidding me? See that, guys? It made me it made me say a bad word. Poison ivy. There. Okay. So can we get up there now, please? Let's get over there now. And yeah, did I wait? Did I actually go up here? I'm not sure if I've gone up here before. Um, but I haven't gone in here before. Yeah, like I said, this area is not the best for traversing, and you will get lost. Um, if you talk to her, well, let me go ahead and talk to her, and I can just show you, Mrs. Seal. Look at your white fur and those strange red markings. If I'm not mistaken, you're a Matarasu. And we don't have Isun, so we can't talk to her. No, there's no mistaking it. Ishaku said you left the land of the living long ago. But here you are. Whatever have you been doing all this time? <laughs> dot dot dot. I suppose there's no point in questioning you, dear. Now, now then, I think I can hazard a guess as to why you're here. No doubt you want me to make you a seal, like I did 100 years ago. My seal crafting is unrivaled. I suppose you remember that, eh? Levitating woman, who's also a seal craftsman, and her name's Mrs. Seal to further advertise her business. It's like if I change my name to Palplays, which Ryan could say that I, that I have, but no, let, don't talk to Ryan. He he makes stuff up. You know, like when he said that he has a brother, <laughs> he was he was lying. He doesn't have brother. Just forget it. Well, I'd gladly make. I'd gladly make you one, of course, but I can't give you a big discount just because you're a god. The best price I can offer you is... 99,000 yen! That's as low as I can go. I'd say that's a real bargain, considering my skills. Pay the price of 99,000 yen? Yeah, totally! Let's do this! Is this supposed to be some kind of joke? Is that really all the money you have? Then what in the world makes you think you can afford my work? I don't know if 99,000 yen is cheap or expensive, really, 
but I do know you get what you pay for in this world. Anyway, I don't have time for idle chatter. Off you go now. Uh, this woman. Any, any Wii, ga uh, Wii version of Okami owner probably, rem and if they talk to her, probably remembers the trap that this is, because she's asking for 99,000 yen, and on my first playthrough, I paid her that money. But, it actually does nothing. Yeah, it literally does nothing in this game. You give her 99,000 yen, she'll ask you to draw on this canvas here, you'll draw on it, she'll save your work as a seal, and that will be the end of it. Stupid, stupid, uh, uh, Fleetfoot making it look like I did that on purpose, but I didn't. So yeah, it does, it does nothing. Um, what it will, what it was supposed to do is in the PlayStation 2 version of this game, um, what would happen is that seal would end, would show in the ending credits of Okami. However, in the Wii port of the game, there are no ending credits. It the game just ends. Um, they did this because Clover didn't work on this version of the game, and thus they didn't want to show credits for a company that no longer existed. The rights no longer existed for it. It was just kind of a, a legal headache, and so they didn't they didn't show the credits, and thus the seal is worthless, and they didn't remove this from this place or Mrs. Seal from the game. They should have, or they should have just done the easy thing and just added credits. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, especially since Ready at Dawn d didn't get credits for this game, but they didn't, and it isn't. So, yeah, do not fall into the trap of Mrs. Seal, because she will seal your fate. What you should do is just run. Forget she ever existed, and vine over here. That's it. Now, I believe, I believe that's almost it, um, for, for the houses, at least. Let's see, there's the one down there. Did we go in this one? Did we? No, we have not. This is the last one we have yet to go in before that one. Where is it? Where? That one, which is our goal. So, let's go in here. This is an empty room, full of paintings. If we jump down here, that's where we'll find the real meat and potatoes, which is this, this is actually the one you want to be here for the story. Uh, the one over there, actually, we've gone into. Be Man, I get lost in this place so easily. Sorry about that. So we have those those people there, but I really want to take the money out of these clams. Give me your lunch money. Do you have no money? What about you? Can we pound your guts out and get money? Yes, we can. Because honestly, that whatever that was that was like 100 yen. That's a lot at this point. That was a third of what I had before. Hold it right there. Are you some kind of wolf? You can't be an ordinary wolf if you've gotten to Pongtin like this. We demand that you introduce yourself. Uh... That's weird. We can usually understand animals. I have no idea what's going on inside this wolf's head. But this strange makeup and divine instrument looks so... I have a feeling I've seen them somewhere before, too. That was my best Australian accent. H hold it right there. I remember where I recognized you from. You look just like that wolf in the scroll at Old Ishaku's house. Does that mean you're a friend of our chief Ishaku? Yeah! That much I can do. I thought so. Then I suppose we better let you win. This this, this is the home of Ishaku, chief of the Ponkles. He's resting inside at the moment. Please go on in. He's, an old, and, he's old and become quite weak. His eyes are, pri are particularly bad, so keep that in mind. Make sure you don't give him any trouble. Okay. Ouch, that hurts. What are you doing? Nothing. Hmm? Oh man, this voice this guy's voice is gonna be horrible with all the voices I've been doing this episode. Hmm? I recognize that smell. Who's there? No. It can't be. I know I but I know that bark anywhere. You must be... Uh, Ami? Ami! It is you! 
When you departed this world after that brutal battle, I never imagined I would see you again. My eyes have started to fail me in my old age, but I can sense it. I can sense the tear you're try tears you're trying to ha hide, too. <laughs> yep, them, them tears. Yes, go ahead and ignore me. That's the Ami I know. I don't know how you managed to make yourself so small, but that rudeness of yours leaves me in no doubt of who you are. Oh, this... This old coot think he, thinks he knows Ami, but actually it seems that he does. I'm no longer the young boy you remember me as, Ami. I've grown to become the leader of Pongton. Yes, I'm the legendary swordsman Ishaku. Legendary swordsman Ishaku. <clears throat> I've gone up in the world since we last met, wouldn't you say? Um, sure. <laughs> You can give me that look, but I know you're impressed. But really, I'm sensing something about you that worries me. Your divine powers have weakened considerably. I assume you haven't retrieved all 13 of them yet, have you? Things have certainly changed since we last fought together. People no longer have faith in the gods like they used to. So I suppose it's only to be expected that you're weaker now. It's sad to see you without your old strength. But let me tell you straight, Ami. In your current state, you can't possibly fight off the powers of darkness. Well, that's bad. So tell me, don't you have a companion traveling with you this time? Yeah, it's it's Izun. Is that a no? You mean you ca you came all this way alone? I wasn't expecting to see you with anyone in particular, mind you. Maybe a guy? Maybe? Well, never mind. It's no big deal. Ami, I'm sure you already know this, but in your current state, you can't defeat the ruler of darkness. We Ponkles always knew that the day that the darkness would come one day. That's why we've been training to be celestial envoys. You seem to have forgotten absolutely everything. Celestial envoys are the, the messengers of the gods. The gods cannot live unless people believe on uh, believe in them. We Ponkles are the only ones who can communicate with gods and we train as artists to teach the world their divine power. Then, on the, then, only the very best of us are chosen to be given the honor. The honor of being named a Celestial Envoy. I was the sixth Celestial Envoy when I traveled with you. But I'm an old now, and I'm not as strong as I used to be. So I decided to take everything that I learned and teach it to my people. I've been very strict, but it's paid off. Now almost all of them have, have what it's take have what it takes to be a celestial envoy. So Ami, take a look around the village and talk to them. It's up to you to decide who this who will be the six, seventh celestial envoy. Whoever you choose will accompany you on your journey. Their amazing paintings will show the world your divine power. If people believe in you, your powers are sure to return. Then and only then will you be able to defeat the darkness. What is it? Uh, we already have someone. Hmm. Ignoring me again, are you? But it doesn't matter. I can tell what you're thinking anyway. You're thinking about the spirit gate, aren't you? Well, not really, but sure. You can think that. Only a fool would be interested in something like that. That loathsome gate invites misfortune, I tell you. If you open it, you'll be engulfed in a vile, sinister air. There's no reason in the world why you'd ever need to open it. Oh, sword's out now. Anyway, it can't be opened without my trusty sword. Sword, uh, Denjin Maru? Never mind that. How's your search for the Celestial Envoy going? It must be hard to choose with all that talent here. Uh. What? Is there something you want to tell me? Just for the record, I don't have a grandson. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Just for the record, um. <laughs> I don't have a grandson. Uh, he died. <laughs> That no-good rascal gave up on his training and ran away with one of my treasured paintings. He's no longer a grandson of mine. I've washed my hands of him. Okay. You're thinking about the spirit. No, okay. So, I guess we can leave. And he says the same thing. So, that's a development. It seems as if, um... It seems as if we're in a pickle. We're supposed to be picking the Celestial Envoy. And we already have someone. Yeah, we have... We have Isun, who I... I mean, I kind of like to take this guy, but... Sometimes I just like... I don't know. When it comes down to it, 
Isun hitting on those girls is not nearly as bad as I might think. So, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, next time, we're going to be going outside to talk to Isun about the situation, since there's nothing for us to do here. Man, that weapon's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make the next episode so that you would like it. Oh, I fell! Yeah, uh, if you include the falling for things I can improve, I would totally understand. But anyway, I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes, and, uh, yeah, we're done in this place for now. For now, I said. And if you're playing long, where is she? Mrs. Seal? Bad woman. Do not look at her. She's, she's, she's like, a, she's actually, if you think about it, she's a con artist. Like, she's... I mean, she's not intentional because she doesn't know that there aren't credits in this game, but really, she's pay she's having us pay her just to paint on her canvas, which she wouldn't paint on anyway. And she's doing nothing to help us. That's that's kind of a ripoff. Yeah, don't talk to her. She's bad. I mean, unless you want to talk to her. She has money, so I mean you if you have money, then you can do it.